Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Werner Tobin here at the Southwest Ag Conference, uh, joined now by uh, Dr. Martin Shilvers uh, from Michigan State University. Martin, thanks for uh, stopping by. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, you, uh, you're on the show, I think you were here at the conference about two years yep, ago. That's you're correct. You're back again, yep. but unfortunately, you're the bearer of bad news. Yes. Um, you, uh, your presentation earlier today was on a tar spot in corn, a new leaf disease. Tell us about uh, what you're seeing. Right, so it's a new disease um, for North America. Um, so we saw it first in Indiana, Illinois, back in 2015. In Michigan, we picked it up first in 2016, limited to one county. 2017, we had you know, severe enough infection that we saw 40 bushel loss in the field. And then 2018, it's, it's really blown up. So we've seen it in about 26 counties across Michigan. So what does it look like? Give us a pin and picture. Yeah, so the name tar spot is, is very adequate for this, this disease. Um, it's it's a, a, a fungal pathogen that, that is causing this disease. Uh, and as the name suggests, tar spot, it looks like tar has been flecked onto mm -hmm. the leaves. Okay, And so that's just the, the fungal reproduction structure. And out of those reproductive structures, they can produce a lot of spores for infection of new plants. Yeah. Talk about the progression through the season. You talked about, hey, you saw this yeah. in, in, in August and boom, it exploded. Right. So um, every year we're seeing it a little bit earlier in the season. And I believe that's just due to the amount of inoculum or mm -hmm. disease pressure that's present. Okay. Um, so this year, yeah, it was spotted in, in July and then um, sort of mid-August, we were just detecting it in the field in every plant and we went from very low severity through to complete shutdown of that right. field by August, early uh, September. So within a month, you know, we saw from, from green healthy plants all the way through to completely dead. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how we can manage this, but first, I mean, mm -hmm. are we probably going to see this come to Ontario? I mean, it, it's, it's obvious it might yeah. make, the, make the leap to Essex County. For yeah, absolutely. You're right. So in terms of scouting, we you know, try and scout close to those those areas first. Uh, that's where you're most likely to find it. So we've seen it pretty much across the, the western um, half of Michigan now. Uh, I, I fully expect to see it all the way through Michigan and probably into yeah. Essex County by the end of, end of 2019. I mean, you know, time will tell, but yeah. it, it looks like it might happen, yeah. Mm. Talk about, I guess, you know, in the years ahead here, we're going to be uh, looking to manage this. Right. Uh, susceptible hybrids, How, how's the hybrid situation? Right. <clears throat> so, excuse me, so just like any disease, you know, hybrid resistance is, is really the key for disease management, mm. right? That's sort of our, our number one go-to tool. So unfortunately, because we don't know, you know, we just haven't had this disease in North America before, um, most of our hybrids, or all of our hybrids, do exhibit disease, so there's nothing that's completely resistant. We've seen differences in susceptibility, mm -hmm. but unfortunately even some of those that, that appear to be somewhat resistant in some trials have certainly fallen over in other locations. So it's going to be a lot of screening, trying to work uh, in terms of like identifying new sources of resistance to this disease. Obviously fungicides is always uh, another uh, tool in the toolbox. Uh, yeah. What do you know about those? Right, so in terms of fungicides, so we did conduct a fungicide trial this year to look at that, and a couple of other neighboring states have as well. Pretty much we see the best promise out of some of those premix uh, fungicides, mm -hmm. um, you know, two modes of action or potentially more. Um, what we're trying to work on now is, is the timing. When is best to apply that fungicide, okay? Um, you know, do we need to be in there at silking or a little bit later uh, you know, to maximize control? And so we have efforts underway with you know, our neighboring states to develop disease models to try and predict when would be the best time for fungicide application. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I think you'll be recommending multiple varieties and... Definitely, yeah. right. So yeah, trying to look forward. Um, yeah, we certainly want to hybrid be scouting. Condition. Yeah, hybrids, yeah, yeah, we certainly want to be scouting, knowing where the disease is, especially in Ontario here, mm -hmm. having trying to you know be ahead of the game that yeah. way. Um, and then, yeah, as a, in terms of strategy, yeah, try and diversify hybrids, grow different hybrids. Yep. You know, it's, it's sort of a little bit unpredictable as to how they're going to respond, but don't put all your eggs in one basket, I guess, would be yeah. the, the key. Yep. And you said, I think the final point was, you know, when, when this disease knocks out a, a field, you're looking at 50 bushels. Yeah, we've seen up to 50 bushel losses, um, you know, and lodging issues as well. So the, the plants end up cannibalizing the stalk and, and they just they just fall right on over. Yeah. So it also is impacting um, silage as well, right? Yeah. So creating very dry uh, corn, so, you know, below a suitable moisture content for ensilement. So that, that's also a really big issue as well. Well, um, Tough story to start the yeah, year, but right, uh, it's, it's, it's what you live with, that's for yep. sure. Uh, Martin, thanks for your time. Always great to have you uh, on Real Agriculture. Yep, thanks for having me. Great.